This is the recording for Module 10 on NDVI from the workbook Making Spatial Decisions Using GIS and Remote Sensing. So this is an um, ArcGIS session, ArcMap session, uh, showing you what your project will look, will look like. And we're again working in Texas and we are looking at drought severity and uh, you can see that it is color coded in from red and orange and yellow down to shades of blue. So NDVI stands for Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. It takes advantage of the spectral properties of the portions of uh, red from the visible portion of the electro magnetic spectrum and near infrared from the electromagnetic spectrum and how plants interact with uh, those two primary wavelengths. And there is a contrast of characteristics of the two bands from a multispectral raster data set. And the reason that this works is that chlorophyll pigments absorb in the red band and they also have high reflectivity in the near infrared band. So this image is showing you behavior of a typical healthy tree where there is a lot of absorption um, of the uh, red band um, with only an 8% reflectance and a 50% reflectance of near infrared. In contrast, the unhealthy, either the dying or the senescent or browning out or stressed tree is going to uh, reflect more of the visible wavelength um, in the red portion because it's not using it for photosynthesis and it has a lower reflection of the near infrared. So the equations at the bottom of the image are showing you how the index is derived. So an index um, varies from negative one to positive one. So the healthy plant here has 0 0.72 and the unhealthy plant has 0 0.14, and an index does not have units, so it is just a number. Here's that equation again. It's infrared minus red over or divided by infrared plus red, and IR is the digital number of a particular pixel in the infrared band, and the R represents the digital number from the R band. So overall, NDVI is a measure of greenness, you can consider it to be a good indicator of relative biomass. The value values range from negative one to positive one, and clouds and water will have small negative values, rocks and bare land will have small positive values, and then healthy green vegetation will have higher positive values closer to positive one. So ArcGIS is going to fit things into an 8-bit structure, uh, with uh, 0 to 255 numbers. So in order to get the minus 1 to plus 1 values, you must apply scientific output. So here is a diagram showing you uh, some of the leaf reflective properties that uh, scientists use and uh, take advantage of in calculating or estimating NDVI. So we have wavelength on the x-axis and we have the per apparent reflectance on the y-axis. It's showing portions of the visible near infrared and shortwave infrared is shown by the arrows at the top. And uh, the visible portions act on leaf pigments, the near infrared act on cell structure, and shortwave infrared will act on water content and leaf biochemicals. So if we look at the green curve, we can see that there are areas of uh, chlorophyll absorption and atmospheric water uh, absorption bands, so they're lower, uh, meaning that they have a high absorption and low reflectance, and then we have other areas with higher reflectance. So if you look at the visible portion, again, in between the two dips where it shows the arrows saying chlorophyll absorption, those are the red and blue portions of the electromagnetic spectrum, and that slight peak in the middle is uh, the green portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is why plants appear green. And then finally, over to the right, this is just showing you that the NDVI makes use of the 
values from the same pixel in a scene. So here is a diagram showing uh, arrows that are sized according to relative amounts of reflection. So um, a dead leaf is going to have um, low reflection of blue, green, red, and near infrared. A stressed leaf will have slightly higher reflections of uh, green and near infrared, whereas a healthy leaf is going to have very high reflections of near infrared. NDVI is used for global monitoring, and uh, this is an image uh, which is a composite showing you values from 1999. And so satellite maps of vegetation show the density of plant growth over the entire globe. So this is called NDVI. Low values correspond to barren areas of rock, sand, or snow. The moderate values represent shrub and grassland, while high values indicate temperate and tropical rainforests, so 0.6 to 0.8 whereas, again, that shrub and grassland is about 0.2 to 0.3, and then the bare areas of rock, sand, and snow are going to be less than 0.1. And these are used by agriculture, um, world health organizations, and other groups that are working uh, to look at plant production on a global scale. So NDVI can be used as a drought indicator, um, looking at anomaly, anomalies from a base value. So an anomaly is a deviation from a mean or an expected value. And in um, this map, the areas that are intensely brown or intensely green are showing areas of NDVI anomalies. In your lab, you will look at red pixels, and uh, this is showing um, extremely dry areas and um, you can, it will also be looking um, at some water bodies, which you can see here. There's also blue pixels, and I just want you uh, to be aware of the edge effect. Make sure that you're not calculating uh, those blue pixels at the edge of your raster. So the ways that you can calculate NDVI are adding a function. You can use your image analysis window in ArcMap with color map. You can also use image analysis window with scientific output. And here are the three resultant images from those different ways. Here is a graph showing you the percent change that you can expect. And um, the percent change represents um, values from your module. And um, you can see that there are 2009, 2011 comparisons of minimum, maximum, mean, and standard deviation. Here is a resultant table showing you vegetation comparisons of shrub, crops, and greenland. I'm sorry, evergreens. And you may not get the exact same numbers, but your percent change should be pretty close to the values you see here. And that concludes the introduction for Module 10. Thank you.